Hey everyone, this is Dr. Maples coming back with our third lecture series on ethics in research. Now this is an important conversation that we need to have. It's critical that you as a future researcher understand we must make sure that we don't harm individuals as a part of our research, whether that's during the study or after the study. We have to make sure that we protect the people that are involved and that they understand what they're getting into, uh, that they do so of free will, and that they understand how we're going to use their information. We're going to cover a couple of things. We're also going to start on the CITI certification so that you'll be able to know that you are an ethical researcher. Uh, one of the cool things about that too is that you will be uh, getting a certificate that you can include on your resume to show that you are in fact an ethical researcher. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Now ethics matter. I can't stress that enough. Ethics are critical. Let's think about some other fields. You know if a chemist mishandles radium in the lab uh, the impacts are truly on them. Uh, they kill themselves probably in the process. They may expose others who are scientists there as well. If they mishandle other chemicals, then it just may be like, well, I've stained my smock. But in that case, the impacts are very much limited to them. With sociologists, we are really the only field that studies uh, society in the way that we do. And we study human beings who have lives, purposes that are uh, the same as our own. They are human lives who have um, legal protections, who have ethical and philosophical protections, moral protections. And so we have to make sure that five, ten years after our study that we don't impact upon them in a negative way, that they aren't able to live their lives. And more importantly, that they're able to continue living their lives fully. We don't want to take anything away from that. It's very important, very important, that we do no harm in our research. If at any point your study would cause harm to an individual, it's not a study that should be done. I repeat that. If at any point your study is a study that will harm someone, it's not a study that should be done. Um, that includes both now and in the future. We simply cannot harm individuals. We're going to talk about a couple of things about that. We're going to get our first exposure perhaps to the Institutional Review view Board, something that um, for your senior theses you'll be working with me on. Um, but we'll also talk a little bit about how we get certified to be an ethical researcher. Now, the first thing that we'll talk about with this is the actual assignment. And there will be a, a worksheet on Blackboard that'll have all these details so you don't have to worry about copying them, copying them out of the PowerPoint. Now, for this particular assignment, you're going to be completing CITI training through EKU. This is uh, a course that certifies you as being an ethical researcher for a couple of years. Um, this course is entirely free. It's something that you'll set up through your EKU email. And um, this is something that um, you're going to get points for it now, but you'll also be using it um, in the spring for those of you who take the senior thesis class with me for 70. Um, again, it's free. I can't stress enough. Um, there are things that you can buy as part of this, um, but if you register through EKU, it's free. They actually pay for it. Okay, so first things first, there's going to be a link. You'll be able to go to that, and you're going to go through and pick a couple of basic things. Most of them are very obvious. Uh, one of them that some people ask about is if you need continuing education credits, which pops up on step five. You don't. Um, what should you identify yourself as? You are a researcher in step six. And in step seven, this is really the only super, super critical and you got to make sure you get 100% right. That's the idea that you want the social behavioral research option and you don't... Um, take the refresher option. You want to take the basic course. In fact, you'll check a box that notes that you have not taken the basic course. Um, you don't need to take the responsible conduct of research, the conflict of interest courses. You don't need those. You just need the social behavioral research option. Now, I'm hoping to work with a student to get a quick video of walking through how you apply for this. Um, once I have that information, I will try to share that on Blackboard. If anyone is interested in volunteering to help me with that, please contact me. We'll We'll be happy to uh, I'll be happy to work with you on that um, but again there'll be a handout to help you with this information there'll hopefully be a video that shows you how to go through this process and in the scheme of things if you have any questions you simply contact me I'm happy to help all right let's move on now what's the purpose of getting this certification well 
the easiest part is it actually gives you something that you can put on your resume. I like to make sure my students leave with certifications, trainings, additional stuff that they can put on their applications that make them one notch better than everybody else who's going to be applying for jobs after graduation. Um, secondly, this is something that you will get to put into use. If you do any research while you're at EKU, you must have this certificate and you must go through a review process from the Institutional Review Board, that's IRB, we'll talk about them more in a moment, and they are an organization that will make sure that your study follows basic ethics, that you have a faculty mentor who's going to over um, see your research to make sure it's ethical, um, and also they'll flag any potential problems that they see. Um, so these are the two main purposes for this. I want to make sure you got something to put on your resume, but secondly, that you have something that um, makes sure that you understand what you're doing and will empower you to be able to do research here at EKU. Now, I'm going to call our lecture there. We're going to keep this first part short. In our next part, we're going to go through a little bit of this IRB process. We're going to talk about different kinds of experiments um, or other studies and how they might be classified. You're going to find that 99.9% .9 of you, if not 100% of you, are going to fall in that first category. And if you don't, you're going to find Dr. Maples encouraging you to think about being in that first category. So we'll pick up there when we uh, go to our next lecture. If you have any questions in any of this, if you have trouble registering for the CITI course, you let me know. We'll talk soon. Thanks.